Hey there everyone, my name is Nate Rag, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course in character design for animation. One of the things that we're going to be covering in this course are all the basics that you're going to need to know and should be thinking about when designing a character for any type of animation, whether it be 2D or 3D or stop motion. Uh, what we're going to be mainly focusing on are basic principles in design, not necessarily pertaining to any specific style of animation other than it's not live action. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, one of the things to consider first, and sort of something I was just saying, is we need to remember that we're designing characters for animation and we need to break our habits of what we might think as far as what we can do with animation design. One of the main things to consider is if you can imagine it, if you can draw it, then you can design it and it can be a character in your film. Uh, one of the things that we often forget about, especially as we've gone further and further into 3D and CG, is we're constantly more and more concerned uh, visually with making things feel realistic. Um, now, while we may not intentionally be doing that, it begins to seep more and more into our subconscious as far as design goes because one thing that CG and computer animation does well is it mimics reality, you know, with realistic textures, um, lighting, color. Uh, so part of our habits have become to uh, be more and more comfortable with designing things that feel a little bit more realistic. And uh, one of the examples that I want to show you guys, just to sort of get in the right mindset as far as character design goes, is what animation can do that live action can't do. Um, so uh, what we're going to start off with is just a simple image of an actor, uh, Johnny Depp. Um, and uh, one of the things we're going to be covering a lot in this course is we're going to be looking uh, at reference and discuss and breaking it down and discussing uh, the importance of things to consider. So here we have uh, just a photo of an actor um, and you can see that if we were to design something that's somewhat realistic well it's probably going to look like a regular person and we might as well just shoot it with a camera live action style. Um, a creative director can obviously take somebody like a Johnny Depp put makeup on him and make him into something that looks more stylized, not necessarily realistic, um, but still our general proportions and uh, mindset here uh, is somewhat grounded in reality uh, based on, you know, we have an actor who's now an actor in a costume. Uh, if you look at Tim Burton's original sketches, uh, you can see that they're even more pushed and exaggerated in their design sense than the actual live-action actor. Uh, you can see his legs are very thin, his arms are thin, his waist is way more narrow, he's probably taller. In fact, if we compare one next to the other, you can see, you know, here in the design, it's way more pushed and stylized and exaggerated than what they were actually able to end up with on screen. And that's one thing that we need to realize and remember when we're designing for animation. And one thing we're going to focus on in this course is really allowing our animation, our, excuse me, our imagination to push uh, what we can do in design and to push our boundaries of what we are comfortable with and what we feel we can do with design for animation. Uh, in The Corpse Bride, we see a design that was used that basically was based off of Johnny Depp for the most part. This character design looks a lot like the actor. The voice was the actor. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it basically is a cartoon version of Johnny Depp. And as you can see, the designers for The Corpse Bride were not concerned with you know, sticking to realistic proportions. Certainly there's somewhat of a caricature and a resemblance to the actor, but for the most part you can see that the arms and limbs and general proportions of the character are very, very stylized and pushed. And that is something that we want to focus on in this course, is not necessarily tying ourselves down to any specific um, 
design sense that is based in reality other than good design and uh, general features and so, so on and so forth. So one thing that we want to focus on uh, in this first course is shape. And when it comes to shape and design, it's pretty much our most basic uh, building block uh, for beginning to design characters. And that's something that we're going to break down in this particular course. And we're going to look at stuff, uh, in fact, if we just look at what's going on here. Let me open up a new. We can see that the actors, human proportions, are somewhat based in normal shape and style uh, based on what nature provides. And one thing that we want to focus on in this particular first class is breaking down the very basics and the root of design when it comes to shape is if we look over at the character design that was for the film, the feature, we can see we're basically looking at a stick with a circle on top. And not even a circle, it's like an upside down triangle. And this is pretty much the root of what we want to get to in this particular lesson, is we want to move away from what's happening over here, which is somewhat grounded in reality, and we want to move towards this sense of design, which is basically breaking down our characters into very simple, basic shape language and pushing off of that. Having that be our starting point. Having that be where we base all of our design uh, language off of. And so in this course, we're, we're going to break it down and we're going to analyze uh, shape language in uh, characters that we've seen in films and TV and we're going to break down what exactly are their building blocks and how we can use those building blocks to design our own characters and think about how we create our own characters moving forward and again we want to really move away from the idea of these have to be characters that have to move around and animate right off the bat you know, we're going to take things slowly and we'll probably repeat ourselves and throughout the course, you know, different elements of character design as we're breaking down the basics overlap each other. Um, but for right now, we're, we're going to focus purely on shape and how that relates to our characters and how that can help us separate different types of characters. And then we're going to build off of that into, you know, everything from posing to, uh, different uh, types of silhouettes and functionality, you know, that will be later on in the course. Um, but just to get started, we're going to keep it real simple and start with shape. And as you can see, you know, the first thing that we have to do is we have to throw out our rules of reality and what we've been comfortable sort of seeing on TV. We have to open up our imagination, open up our creative minds, and think about things more in the vein of over here and less in the vein of this. Um, obviously once they put him in all the makeup and everything that was great and he looks stylized and cool but we want to push it even further than that. We don't want to design our characters uh, in a way that feels like it's a person in a suit or a person in makeup. We want to push our design as far as we can, find out where it breaks and then pull it back and make it functional. And the basics of that are just starting off with very simple shapes and moving forward from there. So let's go ahead and uh, start uh, from the beginning and start breaking things down and uh, analyzing what exactly is going on in uh, character design when it comes to shape language. So we, before we dive into our discussion and begin to break down reference when it comes to shape language, one thing we need to think about is what simple shapes are and where all of our shapes basically build from. And we can equate them down to three pretty simple shapes. We have 
the square, we have the triangle, we have the circle. And for the most part, we can break down different character designs or character personalities or types of people and emotions and personalities into these types of simple shapes. And as we break into our reference and begin to analyze how different things break down into simple forms, um, we have to think about these three shapes as being our sort of founding fathers, if you will, of design. Uh, when we start to look at character designs and build our character designs for this first assignment, this is where we're going to start. And you can think about it in a very simple way. You know, the square is kind of a strong stout, boxy way of thinking about design. Triangle can be very, is, is angular, can be thought of as somewhat, you know, dangerous or sharp in its, in its design. And of course, round is very non-threatening and sort of welcoming, friendly, could be perceived as, you know, soft. And <clears throat> thinking about those simple things as far as how those would equate to becoming a character design or a character on screen is a very simple way of thinking about how shape relates to personality and then how personality res relates to the type of design you need to be building towards. So our first assignment when we break into it at the end of this class is going to be building off of these simple shapes. Okay, so getting started with our first course, our first class in shape language, uh, we're going to start with um, some reference. And basically, we're going to be talking about uh, theories and reference when it comes to shape language for the first part of the class. And then we're going to finish the class with a demo, um, basically showcasing the assignment that will be for this week. And that's pretty much how the whole course is going to work. We're going to have the first portion of the class be discussion and conversation about um, the topic for the class and then we're going to follow it up with a demo for the assignment. Um, so right now we're going to get into just the building blocks of shape language and what that exactly means for designing characters. Um, here we have a simple character um, from a popular film and basically his design suggests he's an old man He's not that athletic or energetic, probably kind of grouchy. Uh, if you've seen the movie, then you know. Um, if you haven't, then go ahead and check out the movie and you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically, we have a simple design that is a person that is stylized. Um, now, where we start from here is basically we don't just think of him as just a person. It's not like they sat down and they said, well, we're just going to design an old person. They thought, you know, what really uh, would help us break this character up into a shape? Where could we start? Uh, nobody usually, you know, when they start drawing a character, and this is one thing that we're going to focus on, decides, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to draw an old person, and, and they think, you know, about, you know, what does an, an old person look like? And, and they just sort of start you know, sketching, um, we have to think about it more simply than that. We, we can't just start uh, just drawing uh, and, and sort of seeing what happens. We have to have a, a, a logic behind it. And, and one thing that you'll find is, you know, when you sit down and you just start drawing, for the most part, you've, you tend to fall into your own old habits. You tend to draw, everybody draws a similar sort of same way. And when you actually start breaking things down and thinking about simple shapes first and starting simple, you can really push yourself into some areas that you wouldn't necessarily think of as far as design goes. So, uh, with that said, um, what we can see here realistically is he's pretty much just a square. You know, his shape language for the most part is very, very much like a square. If you look at his glasses, if you look at the shape of his head, if you look at his general body shape, his legs, you know, certainly of course there are curves and stuff with regards to his belt and his nose, but for the most part he's a square and that's where he's starting. And when you look at 
So now when you look at a character lineup from uh, of the characters in that particular film, you can see that basically this character is a square. The little one, the little boy, is kind of an upside down sharp oval. The bird, for the most part, is a triangle, and the dog is a reverse of the boy for the most part. He's somewhat round. So it's very simple to start here and think about how all of these shapes relate to each other. Uh, that's one thing that we're going to be focusing on in this course is the importance of how characters standing next to each other based on their shape language can say something different about their personality, who they are as a character, or simply distinguish themselves from another character design. Now, in this particular class, we're not going to focus on character lineups for another couple of classes, but you can see when you take a character lineup as simple as this, and you actually break it down to its simplest form in simple shapes, you can see where we're starting to build our shape language building blocks from. We're starting very simple, we're stripping it down to its basics, and we're thinking about how do shapes relate to each other, and what do they say about a character. Um, you know, with this character, you know, somebody sort of designed very boxy, we might think of them as closed in, um, uptight, not very fun, not very lively. You know, with uh, the small child, the, the little boy over here, uh, to the right of, of the old man, we see a character that is much more lively, much more buoyant, much more sort of uh, enthusiastic, and when we turn uh, the character design off and we simply just look at a shape, we're basically seeing a shape that looks like it's sort of jumping up, it's jumping forward. Uh, it has life to it um, compared to the square slash rectangle next to it. So as we start thinking about character design and where we're going to start, we need to think about you know simple shapes and starting there. So further going into, you know, just more reference, you know, these are uh, characters that are more of a classic retro 50s animation style, and we can see again, too, they are starting with very simple shapes. In fact, let's add a little white here so that we can see what exactly we're looking at. And, you know, Again, these characters would be very difficult as far as you know designing them for CG right off the bat as they're drawn, but we're not going to focus in this class. Now, this being our first class, we just want to think about you know simple shape. Uh, we're not going to focus on you know making something necessarily functional for uh, either CG or 2D. We're just going to strip things down and look at how basic things are. And you know here we're starting with just very simple shapes, very simple character design shapes that, you know, when added, you know, slight details and expressions and faces, you know, we start to have, you know, a character that is coming to life. Uh, and it's as simple as, you know, beginning to design characters off of simple shapes. Now, all of these guys, for the most part, are sharing similar qualities in their shape and that's totally fine if if that's what you want to you know start your designs off of but the important thing is is that we're starting simple and and we're starting in a very uh, simple and basic way and building from there you know here's another example while this character isn't necessarily a simple shape whether it be just a square or, uh, or a circle, we still have something that's, that's very simple and what we're looking at is basically a shape that has helped us define a character simply through a very simple shape. You know, he's not uh, looking 
Uh, he's not based in reality. He's not based in sort of a live action mentality. We're thinking about it very simply, very simple shape here. And these are the types of things we need to think about moving forward. One of the things that was really popular in retro animation compared to where we are now with you know, things that are done primarily in CG is a lot of the character designs were in a lot of ways you know, very simple. Uh, in the 60s and 50s, a lot of the designers and animators were inspired by modern artwork like uh, you know, Picasso and Paul Klee. And so a lot of their, their character designs you know, going from, say, something like uh, Snow White, which was very, very realistic and, and in some cases rotoscoped uh, from, from live action footage, uh, we have here, we have characters that are very graphic and very simple in their basic form and how they're designed. And, you know, what we get from that is something that's super simple, very stylized, and very fun. And it's something that we can build from. It's something that it's a place that we can start. And we can always, you know, break down the human form if we want to design something more realistic. But, you know, when we have our animation or when we have our imagination to build our designs off of, it really makes sense to think about, well, what exactly can we imagine? What can we actually draw to uh, create something that hasn't been seen before, that you can't just go out and film with a camera. Um, we need to think about those types of uh, ways of thinking about design when it comes to designing for animation. So we can, one thing that I suggest uh, we all do is look at some of the best when it comes to designers. And Al Hirschfeld, in my opinion, is one of the best designers when it comes to using simple shapes. Open up some of these. Basically, you can see that, you know, certainly he's not necessarily designing anything for animation specifically, but he's designing characters, he's doing portraits of either himself or or famous movie stars, and he's not uh, grounding himself in a situation where he has to draw something that is realistically proportioned or drawn in a realistic world. He's basically capturing the essence of these these actors and these people through funny, odd, random, simple shapes that say more about them than necessarily a super realistic portrait. Uh, you know, this image of Leonard Nimoy, you can see, I mean, these are just such simple shapes he's using to build the face and you know yet when you strip those shapes down you pull them away and you're left with just his design you can see that it clearly looks like the actor but the shapes and the proportions are so pushed that they're very abstract and very simple and that's that's the type of thing that we don't think about enough when it comes to designing characters uh, you know, we've sort of mentioned that with the way things are going in CG, we're always worried about things based in reality and, and does this, does the lighting on this character look real or the, the textures or the skin tones or the skin textures and what we're not focusing on is just simple basic design that starts with a simple shape and looking at this illustration that he, Al Hirschfeld did of Bob Hope you can see that he basically drew the head in a simple sort of uh, bean shape and the arm is just a big swoop. Now when we strip the details away we see that that's basically the essence of his design. It's just a couple of big shapes. When we add in some of the details we can see that those shapes are are still about the building blocks are still very simple but they add enough design elements within those shapes to support it actually being a character. But you know this this illustration did not start with a realistic portrait and proportions of of an actor. It started with capturing the essence of that person through stylized shapes. 
And that's one of the things that I would love for you to focus on in this first assignment when you're thinking about shape language is how can we design and, and build our characters off of simple shapes? How can we break our designs down to the simplest form and start there and push them in a direction we might not have normally gone in? Now here's an example from another uh, retro cartoon where we're seeing a lot of, let me change my color here, we're seeing a lot of extra detail and line work that goes along with the design, but again, at, at its simplest form, we're seeing a very simple shape for the head, simple shape for the hands, and then sort of a big simple shape, even if it's abstract, for the other character in the image. And when you break it down again like this and you strip away the extra details, you see very simple shapes that don't necessarily suggest what is going on, but when added with the details, you can see how they complement the design. They, they stylize a person's profile in a very stylized and simple way. And that's something that we're going to be focusing on with your first assignment is building characters in, in simple forms and, and starting there and adding in the detail that allows them to be basically jump off the page, become live characters. Um, all the great artists and designers uh, in this day and age do that. Uh, one person in particular is uh, Teddy Newton, who uh, I'm a huge fan of his work. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that they did when they were working on The Incredibles is they wanted to take CG humans, you know, at the, up to that point, uh, for the most part, humans were, you know, in CG films were were very realistic and somewhat crude and ugly looking and, and not appealing. And one thing that design team wanted to do, you know, Teddy Newton, Tony Ficilli, Lou Romano, Brad Bird, they wanted to get what is so basic and stylized about animation design and get that into the computer. They didn't want the computer to just do its realistic thing. They wanted to break down the shapes into a stylized form. And so what they did, you know, as you can see with Mr. Incredible's uh, profile, is you can see he's basically got a strong nose, very simple shape, small legs. And when we turn his design off, you can see he's just a couple of simple basic shapes. He's got the big tummy, he's got the small legs, he's got the pronounced nose, and what you get in the end result, certainly there were compromises to be made when they had to model it and actually figure out the details in the design of the character, which is something we'll, we'll discuss when we talk about functionality of design, is they started with something very simple and they pushed it from there. And starting that simple and bold in their design allowed them to get very stylized and graphic in a positive way rather than just pushing shapes to be creative. One thing I love about this illustration is it's vegetables, which for the most part, if you go to the grocery store, uh, vegetables come in all shapes and sizes. And this is a great example of how you can start with very simple graphic shapes and design something in a very stylized way and bring it to life, make it be characters. For the most part, they are just putting faces on graphic shapes, but because those shapes describe items that are actually in the grocery store or, or items that actually exist, you can imagine them being characters. And when it comes to designing people, we can think of...